you know, I consider myself a landscape painter and the landscape that was present in my life was the Bronx. I didn't live in Manhattan. For over 30 years, Halbin has been illuminating communities and its people in whimsical scenes, bringing out the beautiful in the Bronx. As a young man growing up in Kingsbridge, he was always interested in the creative and bored with traditional high school subjects, dropped out. I've worked at a variety of jobs and wound up ultimately going to college in Boston to the School of the Museum of Fine Arts and then a few years later uh, finishing f three more years at the School of Visual Arts in New York. He's a familiar presence in the borough, a lone figure carrying his easel, paints and brushes, sending up his canvas anywhere when something looks interesting. I would say there's kind of two directions that I tend to go. One is exploring, finding locations that are unlike the, any kind of typical scene that you would normally associate with painting. He playfully looks at the cultures of people inside his art and uses colors and odd visual balance to find the beautiful underneath the urban chaos in his surroundings. Often what happens is I will start a piece in bright daylight on location and the more I work on it in the studio it starts heading towards dusk and I start introducing violets into the shadows and oranges into the lights. And that exploration has been heavily influenced from his family life in the Bronx. I'm aware of the fact that my parents came here in the 1920s or 30s when it was considered the country and it was an escape from the Lower East Side. As a young man in his 20s, he was aware of the social fabric unraveling in his community and the dark changes that were taking place during the 70s. Traveling through whole swaths of the Bronx, you know, on the elevated train and just seeing row after row of burnt out houses and just the, the visual impact of that was very powerful. I saw these patterns in the landscape, the way the buildings are all, you know, out there and the windows within the buildings and it's this geometry, urban geometry, and I try to replicate that in kind of more of an abstract way. There have been dark times in his life which mirror the images on the canvas. In 2005 was a, a very challenging year for me. Psychologically, emotionally, just, I did what I called my ur urban undulations series of paintings where the buildings just started to reflect sort of my twisted <laughs> way of perceiving the world. Daniel's artwork evolved from oils and watercolors towards mosaics and glass. In 2007, a commission came from the New York City Transit Authority requesting Daniel to create the L for the Freeman Street Station near Cretona Park. Using thousands of pieces of stained glass as a medium, the project took five years to complete and is part of the Trains of the Bronx series. All of the images that I included were based on paintings I had done that were of the uh, elevated trains. Daniel's artwork has been gaining momentum for him and he is now an artist in permanent residence at Bronx Community College. For the last three years, Daniel has been painting 22 panoramas for one of the largest public arts commissions the Bronx has ever seen since the WPA period of the 1930s. The Hall of Fame gallery inside the library at Bliss Hall installed the work in late August. His artwork is the Bronx. Kids can see scenes from their own neighborhood, and they can also see that maybe they too can become an artist just like Danny Howland. And well-rounded learning is not only about knowing how to add two plus two or how to read a great novel. It's also about taking your creative talents to a new level 